Hello. In this chapter we're going to talk about rates of change for exponential functions. And in this first lesson I'm going to introduce you to number e. This e number it's a very important number in our quest of finding the rate of change of a function and you'll see in a moment why. Let's remember a few uh, things about exponential functions. A general form for an exponential function is going to be uh, denoted such as y or f of x equals to b at power x. b is a positive number and has to be different than 1. We call b the base while x is the exponent. x is the independent variable that's why appears in the exponent hence the name of the function being exponential. On the graph you see the two curves they both represent exponential functions but the blue curve it's increasing while the red curve is decreasing. And why is that? What is the difference? What makes it different is the base. So for the blue curve the base is greater than 1 while for the red curve the base is less than 1 but obviously positive so somewhere in between 0 and 1. This is just a reminder of uh, exponential functions. Now what I'd like to do is um, investigate the connection between a function and its derivative and for that reason I'm going to investigate a couple of examples of uh, exponential functions and see how the derivative or uh, the rate of change of that function relates to its original function. So bear with me for a moment I'm going to get uh, two examples and then try to uh, come to a conclusion. What I've done here is I plotted the graph of a function uh, to at power x. I'm going to evaluate the values of the function and its derivative in uh, two points to see what uh, what is the relation between the function and its derivative. So when x is 0 very easily we can calculate f of 0 to be 1 to at power 0 any value at power 0 is 1. From the graph we can tell the slope of this tangent and I'm going to use the, the following notation dy dx which is the derivative of our function toward power x in regards to x when x is 0. That's how we write the derivative of a function at a particular point. It's obviously less than 1, right? So I can put it's less than 1. So the function is 1, derivative is less than 1. Let's uh, see what happens when x equals 1 if the same relation maintains. So I can calculate f of 1 to be 2 while the derivative, the slope of this tangent when x is 1, dy dx when x equals to 1, it's uh, less than 2. Again, from the graph we can, uh, we can estimate that. It's about 1.4, but uh, that doesn't really matter how much it is, as long as it's less than the value of the function. That's all I want to determine for now. Since the function 2 at power x seems to have a derivative that it's less than the values of the function, at any of those points at least, let me uh, take another function, 3 at power x. So I take a, a higher number for the base and see how this one behaves. When x is 0, I can calculate f of 0 equals to 1, but the slope of the tangent to this graph, when x is 0, so dy dx when x equals 0, it's actually greater than 1. It's approximately 1.09, so it's not really that high from 1, but it's greater than 1. Let's evaluate the value for this function when x is 1, so f of 1 equals to 3. While dy dx when x equals 1, well, from the graph we can uh, evaluate it to be somewhere around 3.3, uh, so it's greater than 3. So as you see, for this function this time now, 3 at power x, we get values for the derivatives that are greater than the values of the original function, at least for these two points that we consider. So. What I'm trying to do is uh, clarify that depending on the base of our exponential function the derivative can have lower values than the original function or higher values. So since 2 at power x was getting uh, smaller values for the derivative and 3 at power x has greater values for the derivative, I'm thinking that somewhere in between 2 and 3 if I find an, a value for the base that is somewhere in between 2 and 3, I will have the derivative to be exactly 
the same as the function itself. So I'm going to call this number E, the E number from the title. So let's see how is that uh, going to look. I already plotted this function e at power x. We don't really know what this number is, but let's see how exactly it's going to behave. So again, I have I can calculate the value. Well, basically any number at power zero is going to be one, but this time the slope of this tangent dy dx of when x is zero is actually one. So they are equal, and when x is 1, f of 1 is going to be this e at power x, so e, and if we look on the graph, it's somewhere, it's above 2.5, so maybe 2.7 something, I don't know, and if I calculate the slope of this tangent, I'm going to find it to be the same value. There is this e number, which is that special number I mentioned in the beginning, its quality in regards to the rate of change of a function is that an exponential function with a base of e has a rate of change that is equal to the value of the function itself and that's what makes it so special of course this e number has uh, so many other applications than uh, just that but for the purpose of our lesson and uh, throughout this course since we talk about derivatives in particular or rates of change if you wish I think this will help you understand why this E number is important for us in our study throughout this course. One more thing before we go any farther. The derivative of an exponential function, it's also exponential in nature. It's going to be a compressed or a stretched version from the original uh, function. As you can see in the graph on the left, the function 2 at power x is uh, plotted in blue, while its derivative represented by the green curve, it's uh, a compressed version because 2 is less than this number e. While in the graph on the right you have a function uh, for the power x, in case you are wondering, represented by the blue curve and the green curve represents its derivative which is a stretched version of the original function because the base 4 for this exponential function, it's actually greater than uh, this number e. Let's actually define this number e in an algebraic uh, format. First of all, e is an irrational number. That means it cannot be expressed as a fraction, in other words, with a finite number of decimals. This number can only be expressed with an infinite number of decimals. We have to have a way to, uh, to represent it as precise as possible and for that we're gonna use the following limit so we're gonna say that e equals to limit when n approaches infinity from 1 plus 1 over n at power n if you want to uh, evaluate this limit and I encourage you to do so you can use a scientific calculator and instead of n in that expression just input some uh, very big number at least a hundred thousand a million or more. If you do so, you're gonna get a number such as the following 2.718281 and so forth. When solving problems in which E appears in your calculations, it's um, recommended to not evaluate the value of E until the end. And at the end, I also recommend you to use the value that's memorized in your uh, scientific calculators instead of just using uh, two decimals or so because your uh, approximation might not be accurate enough. Okay, so this is one form in which we can express this E number, but we can make the substitution for 1 over n, we can call that U, for example. I can also rewrite all that expression such as E equals limit when U approaches 0 because n was approaching infin infinity, but u is 1 over n, or 1 over infinity, therefore 0. So u approaches 0 from 1 plus u at power 1 over u. Now, we have defined this uh, e number, but we talk about exponential functions. So let's see how we can represent e at power x. Similar to the previous expression, we're going to say limit when n approaches infinity, from 1 plus x 
over n with power n. Let's prove that this is a correct form and for that I'm gonna take the expression on the right and work my way backwards to see if I can obtain that e at power x. I'm gonna say that limit when n approaches infinity from 1 plus x over n at power n equals 2. I like to obtain that expression like I had it before for e so what I'm going to say is limit when n approaches infinity from 1 plus x over n at power n over x and not to change anything I'm gonna put everything power x so I'm not changing anything but I'm taking this expression and I'm trying to make it into a form that is similar to that of the e number I have the limit of a power we know based on the properties of the limits that this is equal to the power of the limit so I'm gonna put this limit inside that parenthesis that's uh, brought to power x so I'm gonna say limit when n approaches infinity from 1 plus x over n at power n over x and everything now everything including the limit it's at power x I'm gonna make a substitution just like before but this x over n I'm gonna replace it with u so I'm going to continue to write all this expression in the parentheses as limit when u approaches 0 because x over n is going to approach 0 regardless from 1 plus and instead of x over n I'm putting u and n over x which is inverse is going to be 1 over u and everything is at power x now you can recognize already this expression entirely is e so it's equal to e at power x in our investigation we just determined that the function e at power x and the derivative of this function is one and the same so if we say y equals e at power x then we know that the derivative y prime is equal to e at power x or dy dx e at power x using Lagrange or Leibniz notation so this is something that you should uh, know already and you can use to calculate derivatives of uh, exponential functions with a base of e uh, you may want a proof for that e at power x we can express it as 1 plus x over n at power n and this approach is e at power x when n approaches infinity now let's derivate both expressions on the left and on the right and see what we get so on the right we're gonna have e at power x the derivative of and on the left if we derivate that expression in regards to x we're gonna apply the power of a function so it's n the power times 1 plus x over n at power n minus 1 times the derivative of all that expression in the parentheses which is only 1 over n that n and 1 over n they uh, cancel each other out you see I have 1 plus x over n n minus 1 doesn't really uh, help me much so I'm gonna put at power n and because I don't want to change anything I'm gonna continue to put everything at power n minus 1 over n but when n approaches infinity n minus 1 over n it's actually going to be 1 so I'm gonna be left with 1 plus x over n at power n which is as you recognize e at power x so indeed the derivative of uh, function e at power x is indeed e at power x and with this we conclude this lesson thanks for watching